Hello again. Have you ever tried to make things happen? You ever felt sometimes that you're stuck and actually you need to do something to try to help God out? One of the um, significant characters that we see in the story of God revealing himself to humanity is the character of Abraham, who later became Abraham. And we find his story through Genesis, beginning around chapter 12 and moving through the next few chapters. And what we see is here is a man who decides to take God at his word and trust him. And he leaves his home and he moves to a new land and he completely and totally depends upon God. And through doing this, God begins to reveal not only himself to Abraham, but also the plans that he has for humanity and how he wants to rebuild that relationship and restore that relationship with humanity. Abraham takes God at his word. And as he does that, we come to two significant encounters, the first being in Genesis chapter 15. And in Genesis chapter 15, God begins to enter into a contract with Abraham, uh, a covenant. You might be familiar with the term covenant when it comes to things like wills or, or other things. But covenant is just to form a contract. And so God enters into a covenant and a contract with Abraham but where he promises to make him a success and to make him fruitful. Problem is, Abraham tries to make it happen in his own strength. And in chapter 17, we read the second encounter that Abraham has with God. There is absolutely no doubt that Abraham is a man of faith. And when God enters into a contract with him in chapter 15, it's entirely of God's initiative. God wants to build this. And chapter 17, we read of the second time that God comes to renew that contract or re-establish that contract. And what we read in chapter 17 is God coming and, if you like, signing on the dotted line, saying that the covenant that was be, was promised in chapter 15 is going to be fulfilled. And chapter 17 is an incredible encounter where God begins to reveal more of this to him. But it begins in at the beginning of the chapter where God identifies himself very clearly to Abraham as El Shaddai. For a long time, if you went to court, a Bible would be produced and you'd be asked to put your hand on the Bible and swear on it and, and promise to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And in the case of the contract that God swears with Abraham, there's no greater power or no greater authority he can swear on than his own name. And so when he come, this is one of the reasons why he identifies himself to, as El Shaddai in chapter 17, because what he's saying to Abraham is, I'm entering into a promise with you and I'm going to swear upon myself to supply that promise because I am all sufficient. And El Shaddai literally means the all sufficient one, the God who can supply and meet all your needs. This tells us a lot about God because up until this point, we've seen an example where Abraham had tried to fulfill God's promises by helping him out. Instead of trusting God to provide a son, Abraham takes it into his own hands to try to have his own son in a way that uh, God hadn't approved of. And so it's a little bit like religion, where religion sometimes says, I can't trust God to do it, so I'm going to have to help him out a little bit. And religion is where we try to help God out when God really doesn't need our help to do it. And that is some of the message of El Shaddai. It's an incredible name that again speaks to the character of God. It tells us a few things that it points us to the person that we can put our faith in and we can put our trust in. But it also says that because he will supply our needs, he is the one who can supply us with power. He can supply us with gifts. He can supply us with blessing because he desires us to be fruitful. And so if we, we pause and we reflect on this time where God is revealing himself to Abraham as El Shaddai, 
What we see are three things. First of all, that God wants us to live fruitful and successful lives. Secondly, God is all sufficient and can supply what we need to achieve that. And thirdly, he invites us to totally depend on him. And I guess the question that we have at the end of this session is, are we willing to empty ourselves of trying to make things happen ourselves and trying to help God out and trying to do the things that God wants on his behalf? Or are we willing to put our faith in him and trust him, trust El Shaddai to supply what we need and to be our all-sufficient one? Who do you trust? Do you feel that you have to help God out? Or are you willing to trust him to provide what you need?